CataractCoach.com. Should you give up operating? This is a frank discussion of a very serious topic. CataractCoach.com. This is a tough subject. And the question is, should you give up operating or not pursue ophthalmic surgery? You know, I first recorded this video a while ago, about a year ago. And you can tell by the picture. Because in the video that I'm going to play for you shortly, I still have braces on my teeth. And obviously, I've since got those removed. So it's been about a year. I sat on this video and I wasn't sure if I should publish it or not. But I've received many more emails just like the original one. And the central question is that the surgeon, the young ophthalmologist, is asking me, should I give up operating? Should I not pursue surgery? And that's a big question and a difficult one. But let me show you, these are my thoughts from about a year ago, and I want to solicit your advice. What advice do you have to give to this young ophthalmologist who's considering abandoning surgery? Listen up. So I receive emails every day from our cataract coach readers asking for some advice, and most of it's pretty straightforward, asking about a challenging case, maybe some lens calculations, etc. This email, however, something a little bit different. And I want to read it to you, and I want your input. I want you to help me and to help this anonymous ophthalmologist in kind of getting to a good answer. And it's not so simple. Let me read this to you. It says, I'm a fellow at a big academic center. And for some reason, it's definitely about me, I still have a relatively high complication rate in phaco emulsification. One case can be perfect, and then another would have every complication possible. Iris prolapse, damage, PC rent, vitreous loss, drop nuclear fragments, etc. For me, OR day became the most intimidating day of the week. I don't like the way that I gained a reputation for being an unpredictable surgeon in front of my peers, juniors, and seniors. I'm usually assisted by more senior staff who end up taking all the shots. And I cancel my mind or change my mind or any decision making and that usually complicates things further. And I end up realizing that if I just did what I wanted to do, instead of guess, second guessing myself, I'd end up with a different outcome. So I'm not trying to get myself off the hook. I know I have problems. I'm just saying that this overbearing supervision complicates things further. So my question is, when should I start to think that surgery is not for me? Not all people are surgeons. And it's very, very painful for me to be this person, especially in our competitive field with some who are naturally talented or better dexterity than me. Tell me some good advice. So, wow, that got me thinking. That's an important email. Because you don't want to have the situation where going to the operating room is a super stressful event. You want it to be where going to the operating room it's like the highlight of my week. It's fun. I love it. Yeah, there are challenges, but it's the most enjoyable day possible. I'll even give you a little confession here. There are times where I'm on vacation with my family, and I'll say, you know, God, I wish I was doing surgery. And they'll say, what? We're here in this beautiful city. We're looking at this beautiful view. We're having an amazing time. And all you can think about is working. I mean, it's not really work. It's surgery. It's fun. So here's the advice that I originally, originally wrote back to this young ophthalmologist. I said, while there's a variable degree of dexterity among the population, like everything in life, right? It's a Gaussian distribution. After teaching cataract surgery at a big university for more than 20 years, I can safely say that with good mentorship and guidance, all of the more than 200 doctors who I trained have become reasonable surgeons. Yes, some are simply superb, and others less so, but all end up being competent. It's a personal decision to give up surgery, and for some people, it is the right answer. I know multiple ophthalmologists, including some young ones, who stopped operating and are much happier in that regard. If it's not your cup of tea, no better option than to say that. But keep in mind, if the OR, the operating room, is more stress than enjoyment, that's a major consideration. You want to look forward to coming to the operating room. So in summary, I don't have a great answer for this young doctor in training. I think that at your stage, you're very young, you're just a fellow right now, you have years ahead of you, you do need to crank down and 
get really working hard to achieve what you need to do before that fellowship training is up, before you hit the real world. But do keep in mind that we continue to learn throughout our careers. And knowing what I do about ophthalmic surgery, I think that applies to the rest of the body too. If I was gonna have an orthopedic surgery, let's say a knee surgery or hip surgery, I'd probably want a doctor who got a few years of experience after the culmination of residency and fellowship training. So you'll continue to learn throughout your career, but you wanna be in such a position where coming to the operating room is a pleasure and enjoyment. Yeah, there are challenges, but it's something you look forward to and not something you dread. Because if you dread going to the operating room, that can be a problem. It could be a self-fulfilling prophecy where you just think you're gonna have all these troubles and, and therefore you do. So my other bit of advice is to start with some simpler cases. Perhaps let's put the phaco surgery, the cataract surgery on the back burner. And maybe for you, a better option is start off with pterygia surgery, a little bit more straightforward, or Salzman nodule or some ocular surface thing that's not as critical and unforgiving as cataract surgery. Remember, cataract surgery is very unforgiving. Whereas a lot of other surgeries, let's say a pterygium surgery, for example, is a lot more forgiving. So maybe start off by doing that and take pride in that one surgery. Maybe rack up a few dozen of those or more until your skills for pterygia surgery are really fantastic. Because that hand-eye dexterity, the coordination, working under the microscope, using that smaller gauge suture, that all contributes to your ability to work inside the eye for intraocular surgery like cataract surgery. So my advice to you is, don't give up just yet. Weigh all the options. Maybe a good first step is, let's take a step back and say, let me just work on pterygia surgery for now until I feel more comfortable. Then let's start with the straightforward cataracts and build from there. You don't need to jump in to the very difficult cases. I had a case today of a post retractomy eye, pseudoexfoliation, takes flow max, small pupil, dense cataract, needs a torque lens in one eye. You don't need to do that case just yet. Stick with the straightforward things. And if you do decide to give up surgery, again, a reasonable choice for some people, but that's only a decision that you can make. So weigh all this, and for my readers, please give your comments down below. Help this young doctor make the right decision. Thank you.